Hi, this is Anne with an anagram on um, debugging CSS and in particular on letting the REPL IDE help you debug your CSS and help you find errors and fix them. So um, what you have in front of you is, um, is a very simple little project, um, which I will probably just go ahead and put in the um, description for this video, um, where I've got um, a super simple little um, index.html with some lorem ipsum text, um, a style file that has a bunch of problems in it. And then I also have the, the target page, um, which right here is a little bit wrong. I'll have to replace this screenshot because I want this to have italics on the bottom. But at any rate, um, what I wanted to point out to you is that the IDE, if you will let it, um, is really trying to help you. Um, I'm going to just set this up a little bit. I've got the, the page up in the full browser over on the right. And um, so I'm going to close up that preview window so we can just really focus on, on what the style and um, maybe bring this over just a little bit farther. Okay. Um, so let me just refresh this, make sure that, that what you're seeing over on the right is what's happening on the left. And then what we're looking for is something more like this, where um, there's a green outline here. This has a blue background. And you can see, and the page is yellow in the back. That's the target. And you can see that, that very little of any of that, except for the salmon background here, is actually happening. So um, the IDE tries very hard to help you. And the trick is learning how to see and understand it. You can find errors just by scanning through the text, but that's the hard way to do it. And any modern IDE will always try to help you in the way that, that REPL does. Um, I always think of this um, in terms of this sort of really super annoying character that Microsoft had at one point, his name was Clippy. And um, as somebody's observed, Clippy was kind of optimized for first use. If you had never used Windows or you had never used um, Microsoft Word, he, he was kind of helpful. And then after about the fourth time you had him around, he got really annoying. But the best part of Clippy was this little noise he made where it sounded like he was tapping on the inside of your screen trying to get your attention. And that's that's just the image I always have for what's happening in REPL. Um, this is about the fourth time I've clicked to this file, and um, I'm hoping that that you guys are just itching, you know, wondering why I'm not starting to fix things because REPL's on there, you know, basically pounding on the inside of the glass, trying to get our attention to fix things. A um, couple of things. Always start fixing, at finding and fixing errors in CSS at the top because errors in CSS midway down your file can make anything you do below that completely um, useless. Okay, so um, so we just start up here at the at the top, and we have we have two clues. The background of our page is supposed to be light yellow, and it's not. Okay. Note that there's a green line here. Okay, and it and we get a message from CSS about an unknown property. All right. Take take REPL's help as a suggestion. As we get into um, more and more sophisticated features later in the semester, you may get a warning about this for certain like grid or flex style properties. And it turns out to be not a problem because REPL hasn't been updated to know about those. But in general, pay attention to what REPL is telling you. That says that's an unknown property background color. And you think, oh, I sure thought that was the right name. Oh, but look down here, I'm not getting an underline there. Let's try fixing that. Okay. Note that the green, the green line goes away immediately. Okay. And if I come over here and I refresh my target, my page, suddenly I'm getting my yellow um, background. Okay. Um, one thing I wanted to point out is I do every year get students who put their styles all together on a line. And um, first of all, I find that harder to read. Um, I know if you have a smaller screen, sometimes it's nice to um, be able to make your files shorter. But one of the problems is um, there's this feature in the, in the right gutter. Okay, so this area over here in an IDE is called the right gutter. This area over here from the 
just from the text to the left is known as the left gutter. And there's a feature in the, um, in the gutter where you see these red marks. They get really tiny in a long file, but they're always there. If there's an error someplace in your file, the little red marks will appear. And um, you know sometimes your file is super long and, and you know you have an error someplace, but you can't find it. And you can actually use the little red mark to go up and find the equivalent red mark over here. Okay, so let me um, get rid of those extra spaces real quick. So pay attention to your right gutter. Um, put, your, um, put your CSS on separate lines, okay? Um, so a couple of things here. You note how on every style that's working, the style name, the attribute is red and this background color is not. Now it's spelled right, okay? Um, but there's something wrong with it. And maybe you can just see it because it's below the other one, um, or you can, um, you can hover over where the red line is and see that a colon is expected. And again, REPL is not the final inspector. Just because it tells you to do something, it isn't necessarily right. It can get confused but there's no reason not to ask it or let it help you if possible. Okay. Um, if you want, if you're concerned about how long a file is getting, or you want to be able to see two pieces of, of CSS closer together, one of the things you can do is use this feature in the right, in the left gutter, where you can essentially fold up um, your styles. Uh, doesn't help a huge amount there, but if you've got a lot of things that are as big as like this container, um, you can fold them. Um, at the moment, that folding is not working, which by itself should be an indicator. So let's just take a look. Um, scanning down here, if I refresh now, okay, I'm getting the blue background. Okay, so the so the browser is the final inspector. If your style is working in the browser, then it's right in your file. Okay, but the but Rebel's markings help. Okay, so if we go here, we see another little little tiny red mark. Okay, and it says a semicolon is inspected. And if you just paid, if you just did that, you might do this. Okay, and then suddenly the red mark gets pushed around. So I'm going to Control Z and undo that fix and and look a little bit farther. The errors are always the first place where the IDE determines that there's some kind of problem, and that means it might be on the line that it's pointing to, or it might be on the line above. And one of the things that I see people doing all the time is simply omitting these semicolons at the end of each line. And that has the effect of essentially um, making all of the styles below that in a rule not work. Okay. So if I put the semicolon back, okay, um, I don't necessarily, you know, I wouldn't necessarily notice that the padding was working. Okay. But, um, Oh, yeah, and in the meantime, I had broken that one. Typing a colon. Okay, and now this one works. And if I refresh this page, okay, I've got my top, I've got the green border. Um, I can see I've got a little bit of padding and um, everything looks good, okay, for container, which is the divs, Every div here is a container, um, but I'm still not getting my bottom half italics. And um, a couple of things here, that's being, um, that's not red, okay. Um, the IDE is saying that a closed curly bracket is expected. And I don't even know what that one is. Again, so working from the bottom down, why would a closed curly bracket be expected on this line? Well. It's not, but it's the first place where the IDE sees that something's going wrong. And what you're missing here is the closed curly bracket on this line. Okay. Once you have that, then you notice how there are no more red marks in our gutter over here. There are no more little obscure curly red lines over here. And if I click that, I get italics in the bottom half 
Okay, so we're working off. Um, there's an there's a top half div and a bottom half div, and then each of the divs that salmon has a class container. So um, typos in CSS files are super um, super common and. Um, you just need to be able to find them, see them, and fix them. And really, the REPL is over there trying very hard to help. Hope that, hope that is useful information.